Welcome back, everybody. This is Wally from Space Cowboy Variety Show, and today we're doing a new segment that I'm going to call Spoilers, Bruh. And we're going to go over uh, WandaVision Episode 4. Um, hopefully y'all have seen it. If not, you probably don't want to be watching this video right now. So, when we come into the start of the episode, uh, it's it we get realized that it's a post-snap timeline because everybody starts popping up all over the place. And uh, I'm sure you've seen the memes of people popping up in places, uh, you know, while they're in the middle of doing things or maybe even getting snapped away while they're doing things uh, the <laughs> and popping back up in awkward scenarios, just like we find uh, Monica at the start of the episode. Um, and I, th I think it's really cool that, uh, that how they're doing that. Um, I thought it was a little awkward that like, it seemed like every hospital room had someone reappearing in it when it's only like half the people are supposed to be disappearing like you're telling me like out of half the people like every single one of those rooms on that floor had someone get snapped away that was a little <laughs> awkward but I, I see what they were going for there mm. it, and they did have uh, some interesting stuff like like uh, spider-man did it a little bit of having to reintroduce these people into the uh back into their place in society and uh we pick up on monica heading towards the uh sword um base yeah uh so I, I don't know how much you know about sword and the comics because i actually don't know a ton uh but like i i was definitely like i had to like pause it and i wanted to like read the uh what was it the scientific weapons uh oh god lord what was it uh observation uh response to defense or something like that something like that yeah yeah so uh, I, I also had to look it up and I, I was just curious how it differ differentiated from like the MCU from the comics. And in the comics, it's uh, actually started by an Abigail brand. And uh, it's this chick who's got like green hair and stuff. And um, she looked familiar to me, the picture. And it turns out she's also an alpha flight with Captain Marvel. And there's a lot of Captain Marvel okay. references uh, that revolve around, you know, Monica Rambeau, you know, with her mom Maria being, you know, Cat Marvel's friend, and yeah. and that also makes a lot more uh, sense to me, since when she gets back and she's talking to the uh, the acting director guy, and he's like, "You're not allowed to go on terrestrial missions anymore." So I wonder if that means that before they were having, you know, some uh, space missions and stuff having to do with like possibly like Alpha Flight stuff. But uh, uh, go ahead. That dude's trouble. <laughs> that dude's so <laughs> trouble. Like, I don't know. He gave. It, he, it was so weird because it was like, there, there's like a weird tension there. So like, we're either banging or he's a he's a bad guy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but so, like, uh, just like that that first conversation they have like in the office and like her cards deactivated so that he could be like oh i'll let you in. don't you know who this is like you knew she was coming dude <laughs> Reactivate her car yeah he, oh. it, it definitely went out of his way to make sure that uh i guess he could catch her on her way back into the building yeah it was very much like i'm in charge like because like it was very much implied that like since her mother was the director and like the founder that like she was going to be like her mother's successor Mm -hmm. And like now that she got blipped away, that he was it, and it was very like it felt very like I'm in charge here. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you you've been gone. I, I'm I'm daddy now. So yeah, <laughs> I'm daddy now. It's like you're grounded. Um, but yeah, as far as I know of, like sword in the comics is like shield is to protect Earth, and sword is to kind of keep like space threats away. Okay. Yeah, Which I, they they've kind of nodded to that's a lot they, that well they've hinted at at least that that's where they were gonna head with phase four. It was some more like outer space threats. I'm about right? it. Right, space is cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but along with uh, Monica returning, we also get a return of Jimmy Woo. Yeah, that's a that's an internet favorite favorite right now with his card trick flipping the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. Uh, first time we've seen him was in Ant-Man and the Wasp and yep. uh, just little uh, comics, you know, uh, info is that he's apparently been around since the 1950s. 
Really? Yeah, there was like a different comic company that existed before Marvel. I don't think it was Timely. It might have been Timely. But uh, he was in there and then he appeared later as like an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because I guess he was like a super spy. And he's actually a, a very like a prominent like Asian figure at that point in time, which is super cool. Because it was post, you know, like World War II where there was a lot of, uh, I guess, resentment. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was cool to see him come back because and like he's he's still got like he's over the uh, witness protection or something like that, right? Like they've lost somebody. I'll be interested to see like who that person is. Oh uh, yeah, because like his last the last person of interest we've had from him was obviously Paul Rudd as Ant Man, mm -hmm. uh, and he's like trying to keep him. But he was that was more a probation officer kind of thing, right? This wasn't like a witness protection protection thing so it'll be interesting to see like who that is for sure oh yeah uh, another co big thing about that scene that like i was surprised because i and i felt dumb afterwards like that i didn't think of it was that the the helicopter that landed in wanda's uh front yard was the drone like because i was like it was kind of obvious that like it was something from outside that like was morphed to her landscape and so like your natural thought is like oh this is just like some sort of helicopter that's flying over and i didn't even like I, I feel stupid like afterwards right like hindsight i'm like man i'm so stupid why didn't i think of a drone of course it's a drone <laughs> like that makes total sense yeah the, the, so. the, this felt actually like a great episode to kind of pick up and start to do like these spoiler talks for because it pieced a lot of things together and now we have a a, a a good or be at least a better idea of what's going on as opposed to like the first three episodes where it's just like these serialized weird sitcom-y like episodes where you're not exactly sure what is exactly going on and now we have like a better idea of what's going on and uh we also have a return of a uh another character that i love i also just love that actress and it's darcy i was super oh, yeah. hyped to see her come back and uh what was cool about this is uh kat dennings who plays darcy um was i follow her on instagram and she was posting a lot of things hyping up wandavision and stuff uh before she even uh popped up in the recent episode and none of the other like marvel like people that i follow on instagram are really like hyping it up and i thought that was super interesting and then seeing her pop up in the new episode i was like oh, okay that makes sense yeah I like I like I like her character, like just how snarky she is, and like she's like very like uh, against authority, right? Like when mm -hmm. they're riding in the, the van and they're like, "We're not supposed to talk." She's like, "All right, you're a loser. No one wants to know what you are anymore," kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that was that was funny. But yeah, I, I like the character in Thor. I'm glad they brought her back. Just it's, it's, it's like, and this is a good place for her to come back because you can't really bring her back in like the big action movies right like mm -hmm. she can't really this is something that she can actually like her character can be a, a pivotal part of so yeah I, i'm assuming she didn't get snapped away because she earned her doctorate because before in the thor movie she was like an uh, like an intern or whatever for jane and then when she's in the car she's like yeah i got my doctorate now yeah no well yeah because it was uh they were like what's what's her name in the in the show on your, your notes that you sent me uh darcy, what's her last name darcy i i don't know what her last name is yeah well they're like miss so-and-so and she's like dr so-and-so thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um you brought up the uh the helicopter and the next point that i was wanting to kind of bring up and talk about was like the the beekeeper like how he pops up in like i think it was like episode two and yeah, the very end of episode two yeah and I thought that was super interesting how um, when they sent in the guy in like it was like a spacesuit type thing, like a quarantine suit, and he's yeah, crawling through it, uh -huh, and he busts through the barrier and like all of his clothes change, and then kind of explains what happened with like the helicopter. And then uh, he had like a tie line that went from his suit back to them, so that the way they could reel them out if he had to. The tie line changed uh, from a line to like a jump rope. You know, like the old, yeah. like, yeah. And did you notice? Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but like, yeah. instead of being like tied to his thing, like, it like cut off at a certain point and just made the two ends here. Like, 
whatever the magic is is like trying to separate the two worlds right because mm -hmm. it because it can only do so much on this side to its limit so it just like tries to like split it to two ends and then rather than like you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah i understand and then uh when they reel the, uh, the the tie line in it was still the jump rope yeah yeah that was pretty neat and it, that kind of also goes back to uh to monica when she got thrown out she's still in all of her 70s gear right mm -hmm. like, so which i'm sure we'll talk more about later because man that scene was intense <laughs> yeah that was that was pretty crazy um but yeah that was just a uh, uh, super interesting because it's like how far does wanda's magic go like uh because it is separate separated they got severed in the uh, the line there and it, outside the barrier it's still the the jump rope and if is it going to stay like that for x amount of time or is it forever is it always going to be altered um but so yeah one of the theories i read which i thought was interesting was this is a way they could bring vision back if they wanted to like bring vision into like phase four of mcu mm -hmm. is like if it is permanent if vision crosses then like he would go back out into the world fully restored because that's how he is in this dimension right mm -hmm. so that could be that could be interesting if that's a, a decision they decide to do um I think we should hit on the, uh, the 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 scene where they're they're putting everyone's names up, like who they are in the show, and then like putting their ID up. Yeah, it's it. I mean, I, everyone's talked about it, right? But like, uh, Agnes doesn't get identified, and they don't even put Dottie up on the screen. <laughs> and like those, those like, so right now my people of interest are the direct the new director of Sword. Mm. He's he's shady. Uh, Agnes. Cause she knows more than she's letting on since the first line of her of that you see her oh is, for sure what's a single lady doing like you doing out here like she knows wanda and like what she is right like she mm -hmm. knows you don't got nobody and then her interactions then, with the the neighbor guy herb yeah and then dotty uh is also one of my people of interest because she doesn't get a, a sheet at all which you can kind of write off as like they just don't show put her putting hers up Mm -hmm. But, like, also in episode two when they're doing the magic show and, like, Vision starts flying, everyone's like, what the heck's going on? And Dottie's just sitting there like, this is normal. I, I'm not surprised by this at all. And that kind of, like, threw me off a little bit, too, so. Yeah. The uh, the talent show for the kids who are not even in the town. Uh, There's no children in that town. God, this show's been really good so far. I, I, I'm hoping we get, like, I, I almost kind of hope that this is a little bit of a formula for how they do it is they do a couple episodes where you're just trying to like you don't have the pieces and then you get that episode that's from the other side of the dimension that explains a few of the the gaps that you lost right yeah I think that would be cool i don't know how if if you can really afford to do that from like a creative standpoint or not but i think it'd be interesting like i just like having that mystery of like oh what's this what's this and then having something come through and go uh, they connect all those dots for you. Yeah, I, I really like that too. Um, I hope that doesn't like deter people from watching the show. And if there's anybody watching the video right now who um, is kind of on edge about it and just kind of wants spoilers anyways, because there's people out there who just don't care. It's like, spoil it for me, daddy. And so that's what we're here for. And uh, hopefully that doesn't deter people. Because I've gotten messages of like, oh, I don't know, because it seems kind of goofy and there's nothing like really getting explained. It's like, just write it out. It's like once right. you hit like episode four, like there's so much that gets explained, but also brings up like new questions. This is definitely a turning point episode that you're just like, if you weren't already hooked, like you're you're in there now. Like, yeah. Got their claws in you because this is a good episode, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what's cool about like uh, we finally understand why the like the the dimensions of like the screen are changing, and it's yep. because Darcy is. You're. I think we're watching it from Darcy's point of view. Uh, like all the different like tube TVs and stuff that she's watching the show through and um, in when she's away in this fourth episode like and it goes into the like the scenes where it's like uh, scenes from the previous episodes like it goes into like a full screen as oh, opposed okay. to like the 
the weird dimensional stuff that we were getting from like I guess the timeline or whatever like if you go back and watch like the Brady Bunch or whatever like the, the screen's gonna look right. weird yeah, yeah the resolution back then were they were different like standard resolutions for mm -hmm. the show and stuff yeah, so like whenever like Darcy like walks away and it goes to like a scene that's in it, that's being played or whatever, it like widens out like the it, it gets clearer um, while also still like they're still in like you know the 1960s garb or whatever, but it's the the resolution's better and then the um, like the screen is widened and everything. So, so like just to make sure I understand what you're saying, so that that's the stuff that's happening when they're showing you the stuff that's not necessarily on air that's not the stuff that like darcy's watching through the channel is when you get the full picture with the clear yeah the stuff that darcy's seeing is the stuff that we saw in episodes one two and three where it's panned down and mm -hmm. grainy or whatever black and white that kind of stuff yeah and that, that's what also makes me think that there's stuff going on between like the the blips so like you know how like there's like the little time skips and stuff like there was a uh time skip in uh whenever she flung monica out the out of her house yeah. and, and then whenever it went back to play that while darcy was away um like everything widened up and cleared up and then it, it was just like you didn't see what had happened in that that little blip but like uh, while darcy was away not viewing it um there was stuff actions that were happening in between those blips right the the time skip stuff that uh what what, what we assume is Wanda at this point mm -hmm. re, 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 the stuff that she's rewriting you you don't see that stuff in those blips yeah yeah it, uh, i thought the uh the blip like the 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 usage of that mechanic in episode three was really good because, like, mm -hmm. you saw her rewind time in, at the end of 2 and, like, change how things played out, right? And then in episode 3, when Vision's like, something's not right here. And then it just jumps back and you, as, as the viewer, like, take a second, like, because you don't, you weren't privy to her that she just rewound it. Yeah. But, but like, you have to fill in that blank yourself that, like, something's wrong here. So what's going on? And I'm wondering if we saw everything there. Because we see like him like starting to think what well, something's wrong here, blah blah blah, and then jump back. Like, did we see everything or did more stuff happen? And then Wanda's like, no, and rewound it back to that point kind of thing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um So when uh Monica brings up Ultron and then, you know, there's she starts thinking about vision or whatever and then like there's that moment where like she turns around and sees vision but he's like dead vision yeah yeah and then and, and then it goes back to him being regular and then he asks her that question and uh she's like well i have everything under control yeah. and and i wonder if that means that like she knows that she's in her like made up you know wonderland or it, or if it's something else, like, or, or, or if her sub, or the little blips is her subconscious or something, like, fighting back against her, and it's just her, um, I guess, like, compensating for that. Like, her right. mind's trying to protect her from, you know, going crazy. Yeah, and I'm wondering, like, if this is all going to end up being just Wanda, like, House of M style, mm -hmm. or if it's going to be, like, it, it feels weird to make the main character also the bad character guy not, not not bad guy but like the antagonist and the protagonist kind of thing like mm -hmm. you're just kind of watching her story or like if they're actually also gonna just throw a, a bad guy in here yeah somewhere and I, th um, th there's been plenty of talk about you know mephisto popping up from time to time yeah. like with the rabbit naming old scratch and stuff because in the yeah. comics like uh when she has like the twins and everything it's due to um i guess mephisto yeah, because he's like trying to separate some souls or something, right? I can't remember the exact. I, I looked it up, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting because, like, in that episode, the stork was in that, and the when where she has the her kids, and she's trying to use magic on the stork, and it doesn't affect the stork. I also thought that was pretty interesting. It's like, okay, why? Why isn't her like she's supposed to be in full control of everything? Why are there entities here? And it's interesting that like people have that the animal theory where like 
the rabbit with, with like Mephisto is like tied to these animals that like now there's this stork here who can't who can overpower her magic. Yeah. So. Uh, just the the show is weird as hell, but it it's so great, and I would encourage definitely everybody to uh, who has watched the previous, you know, like Marvel movies and stuff like that. It, it it's fine. Like if you, it is going to be weird, and it is a fun ride to go on. Oh yeah, and especially since this is a talk I've had with a couple of people is like, man, because of everything going on, we've been so starved for MCU content that like that probably is also adding to people like getting hooked into the show so much it's like it's so much fun to revisit these characters and like we haven't been able to like we want we want uh widow and like all these shows are getting pushed back and these movies are getting pushed back it's like all right now we're starting to get a little content it's great again i'm so Mm -hmm. excited and I, i love how like deep like some of these like theories and stuff go because it is it is cryptic it really is, and um, just, just taking the time to sit down in each episode, it's like, oh, what does this mean? And, and everybody's right. taking it like so seriously, because like, it, uh, in overall, like we've always got hints, you know, in all the movies about you know future, you know, aspects of the thing, that, like like Thanos and all the Infinity Gems and stuff like that. Like everything is getting pieced together, and then like uh, Doctor Strange getting spoiled in like uh, Winter Soldier because he gets brought up in a conversation, just like these little little Easter egg things. Right. that people are always looking for um so if we're going to talk about things that are like to relate the shows to the movies we haven't got an end credit scene do you think on the last episode that we'll get a post credit scene uh i maybe because that's kind of like standard for the movies right like all the movies have a post credit scene or a mid credit scene rather yeah and like do you do you think they'll continue the trend with the shows and that we'll get something like that that's gonna tease the next thing after like because this is supposed to lead into i i guess from if i understand right the rumors are it leads both into strange 2 and spider-man 3 okay random ramifications for both of them so it would be neat to see like okay wandavision resolves here's your credits and here comes spider-man swinging through the dimension or yeah, uh, I, I think something. if any show is going to have it, it's going to be the WandaVision show because it does feed into, you know, Doctor Strange 2. I didn't know about Spider-Man. That's awesome. Um, I, I have no idea where that would go, but apparently, you know, uh, Scarlet Witch is supposed to be in this Doctor Strange movie with, uh, I believe, Nightmare is supposed to be the big villain, I think. Okay. Supposedly. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the rumor, right? Like, you, know, yeah. you don't have anything confirmed yet. Yeah, I'm definitely like it's 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 weird. I'm I'm super excited. Like this has got me like really ready to see where they start moving with Phase Four, and like mm-hmm. if we will or won't get the mutants, we probably will, especially with all this stuff going on, and like so how the Fantastic Four we're gonna eventually fit in, and like mm-hmm. who's gonna be our next Thanos? Who's like there? Because you you've got a lot of people that they could p- potentially be setting up for. That could be like that next Thanos, but you could also just also slot them in as your next like Ultron or your next old yeah. Loki, where where they are a big bad, but they're not the big bad, right? Yeah. It, and I, I I think that like because we spent a lot of time with our characters like on Earth and stuff, it's like we're finally starting to expand. I mean, with like the uh, exception of like Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff, people that are already in space, but um. Like we're it, and then we only like just hit the tip on like the microverse for like Ant Man, and like I've heard a theory that it, that um, I think Jeremiah even brought this up is that at some point Ant Man might go into like the microverse and run into the Fantastic Four who have been there kind of like since the '60s or whatever, and uh, then okay. uh, I, with the Eternals like we're obviously like expanding outward as well as you know inward with uh, Ant Man. And uh, even to these other far off realms with Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. And I, I, I am ready to expand past, you know, the realms of just Earth. Right. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it's it's really exciting for sure to see like there's there's a lot of different forks on the road of different ways they could go right now. And it's exciting to see where we where, where we're going to end up. Mm hmm. And with, and with the introduction of Sword, I'm really hoping that we get an Alpha Flight 
like scenario going on where we got Cap Marvel and like Sasquatch is on a spaceship. I'm in. Was it Sabretooth on that team too at one point? Uh, I am unsure, but the the I, think, the I thought Sabretooth and Wolverine were both on that team at one point, but I could be mistaken <laughs> for another team. Because I I know that Sword had a lot of like in the, as far as comics it has a lot to do with uh, like the X Men and it revolves around them a little bit more. Like I think Beast was on there at some point. Okay. And um, but I know the 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 one that I'm familiar with with like who's in the recent like Captain Marvel books like currently is like uh, it's like Captain Marvel and you got like this uh, space dwarf named Puck and his like homie is Sasquatch. Let me look at a. Uh, I mean, I'm just, now, now I've, my interest has been peaked. I'm about to look at an Alpha Flight uh, roster. I could have swore. Yeah, there's Sasquatch, uh, <laughs> Puck, Snowboard, Shaman, Northstar, Aurora. I thought that. I could have swore it was Alpha Flight that I saw that. Like. Old Man Logan. No, hold on. I don't know. Like, I, there's, there's, looks like there's a lot actually. Mm. Maybe, maybe, na- maybe not Saber Two. Must be a different team that I'm thinking of. Maybe, uh, like Joss Whedon apparently is the one of the creators of Sword, which is uh, kind of interesting. I have a love hate relationship with that guy, um, as probably most people do. The old Buffy Vampire Slayer, man. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and something I forgot to bring up earlier was um, on Monica Rambeau's placard at Sword, like the little HQ. It has like photon in quotes, and like oh, I had to, yeah. I, yeah, I had to look it up, and uh, uh, I guess she was uh, out some point a replacement for Captain Marvel. She was the original Captain Marvel. She was Captain Marvel before Carol Danvers, apparently, from what I read. Oh, okay. Like, like when Captain Marvel was like first created, like that was her and then later it became like uh became carol danvers and like the storyline now is it, it, it's carol danvers but mm-hmm. in like the 60s or the 50s when it was first six, made, six or seven yeah because it was like marvell yeah. and then it turned into carol danvers and then there's a few others from there yeah so if if, if what i read was correct i mean that's always an option too mm. that they were misinformed so now i'm misinformed that she was the original captain marvel Mm. And then later on, it became Carol Danvers's Captain Marvel, and she's Photon. Yeah. So, and like, I wonder if we'll actually get to see some of that stuff if she goes, you know, on these uh, extraterrestrial missions instead of just the stuff on Earth. Well, like, if you're gonna work her in now that she's dead, you got it's got to be like a, a Captain. Like, you'd have to like do a Captain Marvel style movie where it's set in the past kind of thing again, right? Oh, was it Maria, not Monica? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. It was her, her her mom was uh, Photon. So, oh, okay. I must have misheard you. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, maybe maybe she takes up the Photon mantle now. Like maybe mm-hmm. something will happen to her, especially now that she she got thrown out of the portal. Maybe that like has some sort of effects on her. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe she's a mutant now. Who knows? You know, like whatever they can do whatever they want, right? Yeah. But uh, so maybe she's gonna be the one taking up that mantle. That'd be cool. Like to see a. A buddy space cop movie, Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I, I'm all about those characters. You get to throw Sasquatch in there, and I'm cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining me tonight, John. And uh, we'll catch you uh, next time on uh, spoilers, bruh. <laughs> yeah, v- Vito coined that, by the way. <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. Go ahead and lasso that like button and smash that sub button if you haven't already. You've been great. I've been Wally. As always, I'll see you, Space Cowboy and Regal. But also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my buddy John. He has a Twitch channel, and he is also another YouTube streamer. You can check him out on the Botch Boys, as well as Build Butter John. Uh, I believe his Twitch is also under the same name as uh, Build Butter. I'll go ahead and put some uh, links in the description below. See you guys.